today we have the amazing, I know it's my favourite word, but they're all amazing, but we have Neil Singh here from Dorkin Brewery. And actually, Neil has been part of the X-Forces family for quite a while and is also supporting others within the X-Forces community, but we're going to hear about it all from Neil. So, Neil, over to you. Where, when did we meet? I think it must have been probably nearly four years ago now, Ren. So um, I think it was probably about March uh, 2016 yeah. when I bought Dorking Brewery, and that's when we first made contact. Yeah, so that's a great place to start. And uh, first of all, I just wanted to sort of mention that you're a reservist, and you've been a reservist for a, uh, a very long time now. So remind me, how long? So I'm coming up to 15 years for my sins, which feels <laughs> like a remarkably long time for something that's meant to be a hobby. But it's something that's a really important part of my life and I still continue to do at least 24 days a year with the Royal Naval Reserve. Which is fantastic. And you've been out twice now on tour? Yes, so I did 2011 out to Bahrain in the Middle East for six months and I also went on HMS Bulwark for five months uh, in 2016 before I bought Dorking Brewery. Brilliant. So let's talk about Dorking Brewery because how did that come about? Because it was a sort of, it was a going concern, very yes. small. So tell us all about it. So, so, so I guess in a nutshell, I, in my civilian world, I've yeah. been working in uh, various account management roles, the last of which was with Philips Electronics, where I looked after supermarkets. And against that backdrop, the Navy said to me, we're well, going to mobilise you again. And mm -hmm. I felt very strongly, if I went away again, uh, I wanted to come back and either start or buy my own small business. It's yeah. something I'd always wanted to do. And so I went away to see on HMS Bulwark, mm -hmm. I came back and I looked for businesses for sale. I looked at a coffee company, I looked at a vending machine business, a food business, and then somehow I stumbled across Dorking Brewery. I'm not a beer nerd, I drink more <laughs> wine than beer, which upsets my team tremendously. <laughs> and um, I bought Dorking Brewery as a going concern back in 2016 with one member of staff, yeah. a very small brewery doing about a thousand litres a week. Right. So, and, um, so what was the decision? Uh, what, what was it that, do you, was there one where there was, okay, I'm going to have to now make a decision. This is the business I'm going to try for. Was there a particular point in time where you got to that? Yeah, definitely. I remember sitting very vividly in the mess down at 3 Commando Brigade at Plymouth. And I was looking at civilian jobs back in the profession I used to do. And there was a very senior position, which would have meant commuting up to North London every day for two and a half hours. I just thought to myself, I cannot face doing this. There has to be another way. And I went back onto the internet, onto Google, and I saw Dorking Brewery for sale, and I thought, do you know what, I need to do something. So the next day I drove up back to Dorking from Plymouth, saw the business, put a verbal offer in, oh, and then wow. the rest they say is history. Probably slightly reckless <laughs> move, but um, very exciting nonetheless. Did you talk to anybody about it? Uh, yeah, I mentioned it to my parents who uh, predictably were a little bit concerned, uh, <laughs> and then my really good friend said to me, I've had some kind of mental breakdown and I need, needed to get a grip, um, uh, uh, but they've all been very supportive since then. Oh, bless you. <laughs> And um, that's when your um, uh, connection with X Forces Enterprise yes. really happened, because I suppose that got to the point. Well, actually, I want to have this brewery, yeah. but I need to pay for this brewery. Yes. So how did that go? Yeah, so I, I, th I think funding is really difficult when you're starting out. And I think there are two things for me that was very important. The first is accessible, affordable finance, yeah. which X Forces has through the startup loans community. Yeah. And and the second and perhaps more important thing for me is about maintain that military community that I know mm -hmm. and love, but also getting that advice and support and networking that you mm. need in a new business. And it, yeah. for me, there was a really awesome Venn diagram that came together where yeah. both things fitted together. And that's when I drove up to Birmingham and saw and to talk about the business plan for Dorking Brewery. Brilliant. So it was Anthony back in the day. It was indeed. Oh, bless him. <laughs> and he's still, he's, he's just carried on and he's a great member of the team. So, Fantastic. you know, that's brilliant. So, um, with the funding, I'm just going to really unravel that yeah. just a little bit because, you know, I'm a big believer in funding is important. Mm. However, it's also very binary and um, having funding is one thing, but actually it's what you do with that funding. And also, more importantly, it's the ongoing support. Now, with your journey with X Forces, you mentioned yourself yeah. there, you know, you've been with us at least four years and you've um, dipped in, you've dipped yes. out, you you know where we are. Um, so how has that sort of played out for you? I mean, is that one of the important parts of the relationship? 
And do you think that's important for other armed forces contemplating self-employment? Yeah, definitely. In fact, I'd actually say it's probably the most important part. And, and the reason is with finance, there are lots of different ways you finance businesses, particularly yeah. as you grow. And there's not one solution that fits everything. And whether you're looking at asset finance, startup loans, yeah. personal money, investors, different solutions fit yeah. different people at different times. And most people use a portfolio solutions. But what's really important is advice and support to carry on as you grow your journey. Yeah. And some of that stuff could be peer-to-peer -peer stuff. So PJ and I, yeah. it's a very well for the X-Forces community. It could be speaking to other military people or it could be coming and speaking to yourselves about a networking event that you're doing. So yeah. for me, that's the most important element is that support and the stabilizers yeah. to keep you on the right track. Yeah. So you, I, I love talking about you actually, Neil, because you, one of the things that you have done and you've done it through, you've, yes, you've, we've helped support some of the network that's grown, but you're a great networker yourself. You know, you haven't had to rely on X forces to do that. And you really did um, uh, tap into the third sector, the military charities and things as well. How did that pan out and who's been, you know, the most supportive in that? So, so we've got a very strong relationship with the Royal Navy and Royal Marines Charity. Um, one of the great things about that is we've launched a lager called Defaulters Lager. And for those of you that don't know what defaulters mean, it's a, it's a crime or misdemeanour where you're summoned in front of your commanding officer, often for being drunk. Right. So um, we give 5% of our trade price back to the charity to support servicemen, women and their families. And I'm pleased to say we're on a number of warships at the moment, yeah. we supply a number of messes and we supply mm -hmm. some hotels and clubs in London with a lager. So yeah. for us, that's worked really well. And it's not about us necessarily making money on that product. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity for us to give a bit back, mm -hmm. have a bit of fun as well, yeah. and also get the military message out there. Okay, which is great. And I think it's quite important that mm. an organisation, I think any organisation, to be honest, there is the ability that they get to a point where they're able to do something for society. It's a natural fit when an X Forces enterprise business comes along and says, you know, helping charity X, Y, and Z, yeah. which happens to be in the military as well. So I can see, you know, why that would resonate so so much with you. I'm going to take it to the competency framework yeah. of running your own business, and you know, if we just look at handfuls, um, planning. Um, marketing, business development, mm. product, making yeah. the product, you know, also managing people, HR. I mean, out of all of the business uh, elements that uh, are involved, what's your favourite and what are the challenging ones? Oh, goodness me. So uh, I think my fa your favourite's changed depending on what day it is. I do enjoy the marketing and the design work when it goes well. Uh, the ch most challenging is always finance, and that's yeah. the hardest thing. And it's almost as if you do too well, your cash flow is tough. If you don't do well enough, your cash flow is tough. Yeah. And a growing business has lots of challenges. Yeah. And I think that realisation that you're not going to be good at everything mm. and you mm. need to get advice is really important. And at different stages of your journey, different yeah. things become more challenging. Yeah. So um, I, think it, I think it's always a juggling act. Yeah. And you seem to cope with that. So that what means... day you catch me, to be honest, and what time of the day you catch me. But um, but I, yeah. I reckon that part of that is your network and you're able to sort of lean on some good um, talent to be able to support you when you need it. You know, and they say that, that that's the power of the network. So I'm assuming yeah. there's a bit um, of that. Yeah, definitely. And I think one of the things that the military is very good at teaching you is that you are working in teams where you are not the subject matter expert and mm -hmm. you have to rely on those teams and you take advice and you make a decision based yeah. on the experts telling you information. Yeah. And sometimes there is not an easy path to work mm -hmm. out how you're going to get there. And sometimes you know where to find the answer. Sometimes you make a mistake. Yeah. And sometimes you have to learn yourself. And yeah. I've made lots of mistakes and there's mm -hmm. things we've learned and there's things we'll improve on and there's things we do differently. So I think for me, it's, it's you're constantly juggling to find the right, the right trim level. So would you say the challenges that you had when you first uh, took over mm. and bought the brewery were different than in a year after that and where you are now? Do you think that have you are they are the, those challenges different because you've got a little bit more used to them yeah. or they're just challenges that actually wouldn't have existed because it was still quite small? You're, you're quite, you know, you've yeah. expanded quite a bit now. You've even gone and relocated. Yes. So I, I, I think for me, um, the, the, the challenges are sometimes the same, um, but they're bigger. Right. Um, but what you do get more used to is predicting them. Yeah. And so 
the first time when you first start in business, the first time you have a cash flow issue, it is absolutely terrifying and you don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. When you're three or four years in and you know it happens, you know a few tricks you can do and things you yeah. can do and you're more experienced and you understand it more. Equally, we've expanded twice now. Um, expansion was really hard the first time. We didn't know yeah. how to finance it, how to do it, how to yeah. deal with equipment manufacturers. Doing it a second or third time is more straightforward. It's more planned. You understand what to do and it's and it's building that plan. And in, in the military phrase, it's going from uh, uh, sort of being reactive to taking mm-hmm. initiative. And that's, that's, that's a really important step to make, I think. So I'm intrigued now. Yeah. So the first expansion, yeah. And uh, if you don't mind talking about yeah. it, uh, how did you get? You know, you mentioned there that the funding side of it was the the challenging bit. So how did you work through that? So, so I, I think it depends on what sort of expansion you want to do. So our first expansion was adding some extra casts, so the big metal casts you use in brewing, yeah. and and a small fermenter, and and we used asset finance for that, which was yeah. quite a good way of doing it. The challenge with that as a brand new business is that yeah. banks are very nervous about mm. lending you the money and they either want personal security yeah. uh, or they charge you very high interest rates or perhaps both. Yeah. And it's finding the right way through that. And the second much larger expansion when we opened a new brew house that's capable of doing 20,000 litres a week. Wow. We have our own bottling machine and bottling running and kegging. Yeah. That was a substantial mm. uh, an expansion. And that was where we were talking earlier was where you're doing different things. You're using some asset finance. We, we got a grant from the European Union, uh, some personal money as well. So you're looking at lots of different uh, methodology to yeah. achieve your overall aim, and that's more yeah. complex. Did you have some support around thinking around that? Um, yes, I did. So I'm very fortunate that uh, my father, who's a, a finance guru and uh, was, <laughs> was a senior director in business, is very, very good at numbers and helping yeah. provide that support network, which enables me to really focus on growing the business. One of the things I have done recently is taken on a business coach yeah. um, who's recommended to me by PJ. And for me, that was a game changer because for the first time, I've got someone every single week that brutally holds me to account, <laughs> has lots of experience in sales, marketing yeah. and finance, and particularly growing medium-sized businesses. Well, you know what, Neil? Yeah. I've mentioned this to PJ <laughs> as well, and I, we will yeah. actually uh, interview um, the coach. James, yes. Yeah, I, I absolutely, know. because that will be quite good fun as well. Yeah, I um, think so. And he's already, we understand he's agreed to that as well. So that Fantastic. will be quite fun. good. Because I can get the inside on, uh, on you yes. and PJ. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But that would be great. So, um, uh, you mentioned your father there, yes. and that also intrigues me. Yeah. Because uh, when, if I remember correctly, yes. so tell me if I'm wrong, but if I remember correctly, your father, you know, was like, oh, not so sure yes. about this at the beginning. Yes. Has that now changed? So he, he's incredibly supportive. He is still, uh, in a good way, the worry bead of the business. And I right. think you need that person on your shoulder who's completely honest and says, do you know what, you screwed up here, you, you done yeah. well there, and hold, and again holds you to account. It's, I think it's really important to have that truth to power thing. Yeah. And I think as a sole owner of a business, it can be very easy to run away in a different direction. And one of the two things that both James, the business coach does, and yeah. my dad does, is they hold you to account. And that's yeah. really important because you don't know all the answers. And has James and your father met? Not yet, Oh, are you but you want to be a fly on the wall, so then you can get the camera then, but uh, I'm sure they agree on the same things. Yeah, though it might be a bit difficult for you afterwards, yeah. you've got both of them liaising. Yes, I think, you know, so. So I think so, I think so. But hey, I, let me know how that goes, because I would like to be a fly on the wall if that ever yeah. happened. So I'm um, also, um, I wanted to ask you this question, because yeah. I actually wanted to make a point of asking you this question. And that was the one about how you're managing being a reservist and running your own business because there are other reservists out there or business owners who want to be reservist. Is that working? Yeah, so look, I'm not going to lie, it's a challenge. And sometimes it's it's quite hard. I'm very lucky with the Royal Naval Reserve that that it's done on the amount of days you do and they're really supportive about trying to make that as flexible as possible. So they've always been consistently supportive of me with my own mm-hmm. business. And as long as you do the right training over a course of a period, they mm-hmm. are very supportive. And the other thing I'd like to echo is that, heaven forbid, you were mobilized mm-hmm. uh, and you have your own business and you just can't go, I couldn't go at the moment. Mm-hmm. You can appeal and you're very likely to be successful. And I'm not aware of any situation where someone yeah. with their own business hasn't appealed and won. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really important to realize that. And certainly the Royal Navy works on what we call intelligent mobilization. Yes. 
and it shouldn't really ever get to that point anyway. Yeah. Um, so they are very flexible. There's lots mm. of stuff you can do in the UK as well. Yeah. Well, I actually think, I mean, uh, this is my own personal opinion, but I think the armed forces is really sort of trying to get a forward look on this yes. in terms of that flexibility in, you know, serving, being yes. a reservist and also looking after people so it doesn't surprise me that you, what you've just said in terms of you know being cognizant definitely and i, and I think the other thing that's really important it's really good for your sanity yeah. so to go back and have a boss again for a few days a year <laughs> and have a regular income coming in is actually really useful and it's yeah. quite nice as well and you still get that family yeah. atmosphere and the people you know and I, I think that's quite important because it can be very isolating being on your own especially running a business yeah and it, I, I think that's a really important thing to keep up if you can okay so um you've become an ambassador for us have you i have indeed i have indeed wonderful and um what region is that so i cover london and the southeast yeah. so quite a big area yeah. and i think one of the great things about the ambassador network is it's kind of my first step in terms of helping to give back yeah. And although I'm quite early on in my journey compared to a lot of more mature businesses, there are certainly lessons I've learned and identified that I could help pass down to new ex-forces startups. And I think none of us want to be in a position where you hit the same pothole yeah. that someone else could have told you about yeah. two years prior. And, and you know, Neil, you're, uh, I love working with you. I think you're one of the most approachable people and just always so calm so it must be and again depends what day you catch me <laughs> exactly so i think you know being an inspiration to others and bringing uh, pools of people together so that they can have some peer-to-peer -peer time is quite important because the things that we talk about on a regular basis is this sense of belonging yes how important is that to you Definitely. I, I would actually say it's vital. So I don't think you can ever speak to someone in the same way as another business owner because you all have the same challenges at some point. And that ability for someone to say, do you know what? I've been there. This is how I dealt with it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that always impresses me, if you speak to another business owner, they never say you should do that. You should yeah. do that. They say, well, this is how I dealt with it. Mm -hmm. This is what you might want to consider. And there are some really interesting things out there. And those common threads yeah. are what we need to share, I think. Yeah. Because it stops people having to go around the wheel again. Right. I agree with you. I want to bring uh, zone it back into mm. your business and Dorkin Brewery. What are the plans? So, so carry on aggressively growing. So, you know, our, our vision is to be the best brewery in Surrey. Yeah. And uh, we are the only brewery that does guaranteed next day delivery or your money back. Oh, wow. Good. And, and we do a guarantee of quality. And we measure what our customers say and what our employees say. Um, but we've got a long way to go. We want to be the best we can be next two years we will open our own bar and tap room right. and we hope to use X forces to help launch that new business absolutely so, <laughs> 100 percent there <laughs> i think it'd be really exciting and so for, for us you know we don't want to stop where we are we want to keep yeah. evolving and growing and it's that military phrase again it's adapt and overcome and yeah. probably even 18 months ago if you said to me neil do you plan to open your bar own bar and tap room i said no way yeah but where we see an opportunity. I can see you being brilliant with that. Well, hopefully, hopefully. And everything's about local. So the best bakeries, yeah. the best meat producers, um, yeah. local milk from the farm are on. So really, really local. Yeah. Uh, I think that's massively important. So you also, um, when I came to visit yeah. you, which was a, quite an eye-opener, because yes. I've never been to a brewery before, you know, uh, I met some of your team. Yeah. Um, you have quite an interesting way that you work with your team mm. and i walked away from that you're probably actually if i'll be really honest about it because it's just uh reminded me is that i've got to a point where i've introduced a bit more flexibility and working um you know with that micromanaging yeah. and all that sort of good stuff whereas before it would be a case of yep yeah, we're all in at the same time we're all sort of going at the same time and it's quite uniform mm. but you taught me something about being a bit more flexible which gives the uh, team yeah definitely so I, I think for me flexible working is really important so as a business we're a weekly based business the pubs can be busy on one week quite on another yeah and what I say to the team is, as long as you're in at eight o'clock in the morning, you mm. manage your own time. So if it's quiet at three o'clock, go and play Xbox, go to the pub, you manage when you finish. Yeah. If it's busy, we will voluntarily stay late. There's yeah. no overtime, yeah. uh, but we just smash it out and get on with it. So in December, right now, I've got two vans out and we've yeah. got a brewery team brewing late. So yeah. we're really busy. In January, we'll start at 10 and finish at three. Yeah. We also have uh, no holiday cap. 
-hmm. People can take. That's what I found. <laughs> I'm like, wow, how did you do that? <laughs> so, so, so people can take uh, as much holiday as they want. But we do have, and it goes back to our values. So I recruit based on values. Three values: be kind, take ownership, get things done. So if at any one point the team feels someone's taking advantage, mm -hmm. they want to have a chat as a team, and it is a team. Yeah. And do you know what? In four years, we've never had an issue. So. That is remarkable, and I think it's just that is that's the whole leadership piece that absolutely it's one that really resonated with yeah. me because I walked away. I remember coming back and saying, Martin, do you know what Neil's doing? How would that work? How would that work? Well, we're halfway to that uh, uh, already because we have more remote working than we've ever had before. And technology is such an amazing tool. So I lost my team remote base yeah. and we can do that. And if I've got the best person in Bristol doing yeah. telesales, do you know what? We'll take yeah. that yeah. and we'll find a way to manage it. I think it's so important. And when we do staff engagement surveys, we did our first one two weeks ago, the top result was actually that flexibility, the team supporting them. And that's really, I'm really proud when I see that. We're coming full <laughs> circle here because uh, the next thing I'm going to ask is, can I have a copy of that survey? Because I don't, I would like to do yes, that. Yes, of course. Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah. <laughs> see, peer to peer, yes. it's working now. Exactly. <laughs> so um, one uh, other thing I wanted to talk to you about, I know we've touched on finance and funding. Mm. And you've been uh, on our panels for a few of the anniversaries yeah. now, a regular feature on our anniversaries. And we've talked about funding. Yes. And I'm not on about startup funding. Yeah. We know how that works. You've uh, tapped into that. That's all great. But actually, it's when you get to a certain point, and I know you and PJ yeah. Barr have talked about this as well, you get to a certain point, there's still a bit, bit of a gap, isn't there? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. And, I, and I, think, I think there are different ways you can fund a business and different things to different people. But the most common option is to choose private equity and give away equity in return for a stake mm -hmm. in your business. And I think that's, for me personally, that's quite tough when you're a small business because for the funding, you need yeah. to exponentially grow. You yeah. have to give away a lot of equity. Yeah. And they'll want to see a return in a set period mm -hmm. and then move on. Fine for some people. For me, I think there's a gap yes. between... Uh, the seed funding which yeah. gets businesses going and we're now seeing exporters businesses that have grown and mature that need that next gear change yeah and it's sustainable funding and sensible interest rates exactly so i think that is a real big takeaway for us is that you know for that next stage and it's the gear change i quite like that phrase the gear change and let's see how we can look at other options that are ethical finance yes. that's the thing ethical finance so we'll have to start. that's a takeaway, Neil, for us, because we were already talking. Uh, I know that Martin's got a few things that he's talking to other people yeah. through the British Business Bank. So things are moving along. Could we, We've been talking about this for a while. Yeah. This isn't the first year we've been talking about it. So let's really make that a reality. Mm. And, you know, the more businesses like you where they've been with us from seedling yes to now actually recruiting and all that sort of good stuff how many people are you employing? so we've got a team of nine in some shape or form and right. i think that'd be my key message is from from a government or business point of view that extra funding you're looking at doubling jobs tripling jobs exactly. all in the local community and yeah. lord young spoke about how important small businesses yes for the economy in total yeah and actually if if seed funding works well by definition you're gonna have bigger businesses that need support so continuing that support through the system is very important I think. I think so too and I think where we are as a an economy and also as a country um, I think it's just vital that we address this issue because there is still a gap so having um, people at the grassroots or the coal face even to talk about it and help push that initiative. I think we see a lobbyist here. <laughs> so, you know, we've done a couple of policy changes, but I think Neil could help us with this one. Consultancy role. <laughs> <laughs> yep, always selling, never stop selling. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bless you. So I want to ask you uh, something that's really important. Yeah. And um, this is about you and your business. Mm. But if we had a magic wand, yeah. and also getting this right out there, what would be either, you know, what would be the thing that would make a difference to you or personally or professionally? What would that be? So I think given the stage we're at at the moment, so I'm going to be greedy and say two things. Yeah, please so, do. so the first is sustainable ethical finance for businesses that aren't fully mature, yeah. but are growing fast. And, yeah. and my observation is I don't think the high street banks are set up for that. Yeah. Um, and the second thing is 
that mentorship and support that goes mm -hmm. past year two. Yeah. And whether that's peer to peer, it's yeah. mentorship, coaching, or perhaps a hybrid. Yeah. I, I use all three. Yeah. Um, I think remains to be seen, but I, I think that's really important because you can't do one without the other. Yeah. If you've got the finance, you have to have the support network. Yeah. If you have the support network, you've got to have the finance. I, I agree with you, and I think therein lies a really good ask because not only will that support Neil and his business and you do make a proactive um, approach to hire other armed forces as well yes. so you know we're talking about growth we're talking about job creation and we're talking about supporting that whole leadership but it's a two-way trip on that as well because I think whoever works with you also gets quite a lot back as well uh, so I, I want to help with this. I want to help and get that message out and start to put maybe even a little steering group together, which you would need to be a focal point on, because not only will that help Dorking Brewery, but actually it will help others like Neil, uh, who is pioneering this step change. What does that sound like? No, it sounds great to me. And I think if you can nail that, I think that's a very exciting future. There's no, yeah. there's no doubt <laughs> When, when, when. Yeah, exactly. Let's make it yes. happen. And, you know, th this is a great medium to really get out to as many people, the right people, and bring that change because it's not just about you, it's not just about me, it's not just about the other ex forces businesses, it's about our economy and also giving some uh, hope to the generations coming forward. Yes, definitely. Excellent. So lovely to see you. <laughs> thank you very much, Ray. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Neil spoken a little bit about uh, the next generation and also how why it's so important to have a finance solutions across the board because it is about economic growth it is about also inspiring the next generations and not them them not having the same issues that maybe we we've experienced and continue to experience but Neil you were again I use my favorite word amazing we had our very first um, Enterprise for Life uh, program, which was the Enterprise um, uh, workshop over a weekend for the cadets. What is your thoughts about um, cadets having, or even young people, full stop, having enterprise skills? Why would you think that's important? You did a brilliant keynote speech for us. Yeah, so I, I think for anybody to learn about business and financial literacy is really important. And I think where we can help is if we have cadets or young people doing young enterprise or the enterprise program that X Forces run, mm -hmm. we can support them from a business point of view, yeah. come and do work experience with us, come and understand how a business works. Yeah. But equally, it doesn't matter what you do in life, you have to have those key skills. And we spoke a little bit earlier, I find it incredible that everyone's learning algebra <laughs> and people don't know how a mortgage works or yeah. how a business loan works or how cash flow works. Exactly and that. Yeah. In my view, those are more important skills. Yeah. and. Um, I'll tell you one thing that you won't have, because we haven't mm. uh, met each other for mm. a couple of months now, but one of the feedbacks, and I really want you to know this because it'll probably go <laughs> like that for you. We had uh, one of the cadet's parents ring up Colonel Clinton and say, what have you done to my child? <laughs> he's, he's actually walking two inches taller. And Fantastic. that is, you know, that's the importance of, you know it's the confidence mm. it's the um skills to be able to negotiate and problem solve those sort of things that mm. actually become life skills and we can do that through programs mm. like that and support that you've provided so thank you very much for that no very much so and I, I think what's really interesting is whether you're in the services now or you're a cadet you know statistics say you're unlikely to have a career for life now mm -hmm. And you're likely to have three or four very different careers in your life. Mm -hmm. Anything you can do to build those foundations early on yeah. to enable you to make choices, yeah. inform choices, yeah. I think can only be a good thing. So, um, and so thank you. I've got something else that I really do want to talk about as well, and it's about the uh, Armed Forces Covenant. And the Armed Forces Covenant, you know, there's a lot of the big businesses mm. who have signed the Covenant and they're able to quite easily roll out some of the pledges as well. So two things on that. Firstly, you know, it will be great to get the big businesses that have signed the Armed Forces Covenant to be working with the smaller Armed Forces led organisations. And I can pretty sure there's a few in those that Drew, Dorking Brewery yes. could, would want to talk to. So facilitating that and making that really happen would be really good. 
And the other part of the question is that how do we uh, enable and support small businesses to understand what the uh, covenant is all about and also sign up because you've signed up, haven't you? Yeah, and I, I think, you know, as, as someone who's still serving as a reservist, I, I think it's really important that we sign the Armed Forces Covenant. And if we take on military people, they'll get yeah. the same benefits as any other bronze or silver yeah. signatory would do. Where I think there's a disconnect yeah. is those large organisations that have signed, mm. perhaps giving us some support, mentorship, Right. To, to advise us on what to do because we want to learn and learn new things and, right. and I think there's a great synergy there that perhaps we could explore more. Brilliant. Funnily enough, mm. uh, the Gold Alumni Association, which is the gold um, level uh, covenant employment yeah. recognition scheme, um, have spoken about mentorship from those groups, big businesses, to be able to support others as well. So why don't I actually hold that to account and see if you would be prepared to do that? Would Thank you? Because I didn't nice. know that was going to happen, but I do know that we've already spoken about it on several occasions at the Gold Alumni Association. So I'm going to speak to the chief uh, executive. His name is Neil. Great, it's a good name. <laughs> and he actually calls himself Jacko. So Jacko, if you're listening, I'll make sure you, I'll, I'll send you the link to this one. Let's get Neil sorted out with um, a brilliant uh, gold alumni uh, covenant um, employer recognition scheme, individual organisation, and get that cracking. Because that should be quite easy, that one. No, that'd be really great. Thank you very much. You're welcome.